Good morning, YouTubers. This is Steve Bradley, God's Wordsmith. And I want to talk to you today about John chapter 6, verses 1 through 14, uh, in a particular way. And I've titled this, The Power of Insignificance. And the key phrase is, but what are they among so many? So let's look at John chapter 6, verses 1 through 9. Now, when you think about it, almost all of us are insignificant. I certainly am. You probably are, unless you're a famous person watching this, hearing it. This boy, this boy and are, I think, probably about 12, 10 or 12, he was insignificant. And what we read in John chapter 6, verses 1 through 9, is this. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. Then a great multitude followed him, because they saw his signs, which he performed on those who were diseased. And Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw a great multitude coming toward him. And so he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? Now note this verse. This he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. And Philip answered him, 200 denarii, that's 200 days wages, worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have a little. Besides, they were in a desert place. Where are they going to go get it? On the other hand, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, Well, there's a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? And we're about to find out. Jesus and insignificant people make a powerful combination. So it says, then Jesus said, make the people sit down. What are they among so many? Jesus' response is, get the people to sit. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. There were probably women and children there too, because we have this boy. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to the disciples, and the disciples to those sitting down, and likewise of the fish, as much as they wanted. Plus, of course, 12 big baskets of the leftovers. This kind of answers the question, what are they among so many? It's kind of like the water turned into wine in John 2. It was a simple miracle. And yet an astounding one. And it's not hard to work out the implications here. And they ha there are implications for you as well. Little people and what they have to offer are mighty when in the hands of Jesus. The gifts that you give to the Lord whatever it is, your talents, your time, your abilities, your treasure, all these things, when they're put directly into his hands, are mighty. With you, five loaves and two fish equals five loaves and two fish. That's it. That's all it is. With Jesus and you, five loaves and two fish equals 5,000 people fed to the full, plus 12 baskets, large baskets, by the way, of leftovers. When Jesus is there and you give whatever it is he asks of you over to him, it's an amazing result, a miracle. And yet it seems like it's not a miracle because all he did was take those loaves and those fish and just break them apart and hand them out. So it wasn't that he 
made some amazing prayer, although he did pray, and then suddenly a bolt of lightning came down and struck the loaves and distributed. No, he just took them in his hands and broke them up. 5,000 people ate. All had as much as they wanted and 12 baskets of leftovers. <clears throat> so what does that mean for you? Well, in the first place, don't focus on your insignificance. Focus on Jesus' limitless power. If he asks you, asks you to do something and you say, I'm not adequate for this. Yes, you are, because he asked you. Find out what Jesus wants you to do and do it. And do not worry about success. Things will occur according to his plan if you are in his will. Remember John chapter 6, verse 6? He himself knew what he would do. In other words, Jesus knew about the boy, the fish, and the loaves. And when the boy handed over the bread and fish, God did the rest. Now that's you in any endeavor that he asks of you. And I don't mean just preaching or serving in a church, however noble that may be. I mean everything. Maybe you want to be a cook and God has called you to do that. A chef. Maybe you want to be an engineer and God has called you to do that. Building. Maybe you want to be a carpenter or an architect or a builder. Handing something over to Jesus so he can use it is everything. The measure of success with Jesus, very simply, is three things. Actually, one thing. Obedience. Just do what he says. It's that simple. Obey him, and you've got it all. And when you do what he asks, it's always enough. Every one of those 5,000 people ate. They ate as much as they wanted. And it says in other Gospels, they ate to the full. And there was always a leftover. There always is more than enough when you do what he asks. God bless you guys. Hope you enjoyed this. And I hope today is a good day for you all. This is Steve Bradley, God's Wordsmith, signing off.